We're going to stay on the social media tip for our next two stories. Social media is a key part of another battle, the one against the so-called Islamic State. ISIS militants have long used the web to spread their message, but some of the groups fighting against ISIS in Iraq and Syria are also active online. That includes the Kurds, who claim to be the biggest ethnic group in the world without a country of their own. Now Kurds say that Facebook is denying them a home on social media as well. From Stockholm, Christopher Livesey explains. From the comfort of this cafe in central Stockholm, the fighting in Iraq and Syria couldn't seem more distant. But with the help of free Wi-Fi, a group of Kurdish Swedes are taking on the Islamic State on the cyber battlefield. Ara Ahmed manages a Facebook page called the Liberty Lions. We were on Facebook sharing news about the war. At one point, it had over 10,000 likes. But this summer, he received warnings from Facebook for violating community standards. It wasn't for something you might expect, like posting bloody images from a war zone. There was a show with Jon Stewart. From Comedy Central's World News headquarters in New York. He uh, explained uh, Turkey intervening in the war against ISIS, but actually their fight was against the Kurdish militia, the PKK. So tell me about this game-changing airstrike Turkey is launching. So far, most of Turkey's airstrikes have been against the pro-American Kurds. So they're stepping up the fight against ISIS by taking out the people most effectively fighting ISIS. It's a brilliant strategy. Certainly no one will see that coming. It reached about 200,000 people with 1,000 shares. And after one day and several hours, I come in Facebook, I get a warning that my post violates the standards of Facebook. I don't understand why... The answer may lie in a secret document reportedly leaked in 2012 by a disgruntled Facebook employee. It was the company's violations list, which was not public, and it affects users worldwide. Most of the violations are for things you'd expect, like images of self-harm or sexual violence. But several stand out for how specific they are to Turkey and the Kurds. No posting maps of the disputed area of Kurdistan. No insults against Ataturk, the founding father of modern-day Turkey. And even more severe, you're automatically suspended for depicting fighters from the PKK, a militant Kurdish separatist movement considered a terror group by Turkey and the U.S. But the PKK has also been among the most effective ground forces against the Islamic State. A one-second image of PKK combatants from The Daily Show appeared in Ahmed's Facebook post, and it seems that's all it took for administrators to shut it down. Shortly afterwards, Facebook took down the entire Liberty Lions page. A Facebook spokesperson declined to be interviewed, but in a written statement, she said, There is no place for terrorists on Facebook. We work aggressively to ensure that we do not have terrorists or terror groups using the site, and we also remove any content that praises or supports terrorism. But who's a terrorist, and what's supporting terrorism? You know, there's nothing banning the image of bin Laden or the image of al-Baghdadi or the image of Hitler. Well, why is this the only one issue in the world that I can't talk about? Thoreau Redcrow studies Kurdish guerrillas at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and is an advocate for the Kurds. He found his own Facebook account blocked several times for posting his work. So he tried an experiment to test the terrorist designation. And then I would post a picture of a burning Turkish flag. And when I log in eight hours later, there's the, oh, you have violated Facebook guidelines. Do not do this again. Okay. Well, then I'd say, okay, well, I'm going to post a map of Northern Kurdistan with, with a guy giving a peace sign and like, you know, glory to Northern Kurdistan. Or whatever. So, and then there you go. Oh, you violated the guidelines. We asked Facebook if this is their standard protocol regarding Turkey and the Kurds. Again, they wouldn't respond. Turkey is infamous for cracking down on its critics, with more jailed journalists than almost any other country. When it comes to social media, no other government makes more requests to remove content from Twitter. Last year, Turkey blocked Twitter and YouTube in the run-up to local elections. Meanwhile, Kurdish rights activists are increasingly nervous that their pages will be taken down and their voices silenced. I just wanted to show you this this picture. This is Evin, who's using an alias. She manages a page called Save Kobani. She just received her latest warning from Facebook. 
for depicting the funeral of a Kurdish fighter, someone she says was not from a group designated a terror organization. I don't know how a grieving mother can violate the community standards of Facebook. Why are we being censored to show our pain to the world? The old adage, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, comes to mind. But Kurdish activists and others on the internet wonder, who gets to make those decisions? For The World, I'm Christopher Lipsky.